Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyberhack. So today I have officially purchased the Sal 1, which is the uh, security analyst level 1 from TryHackMe. I have been a longtime fan of TryHackMe. I'm not sponsored by TryHackMe by any means. I, I bought their merch, I have their hoodie and everything else. And I saw these other videos from other content creators um, saying that they passed and got certified with the Sal 1. I was like, wow, that was quick. I mean, this thing was just released and, and these guys are doing 24 hour exams and enough time to push it out to YouTube so fast. And I was like, oh, let me take a quick look at this. So let me just go through with you guys right now. Some of the requirements prior to taking this certification. Now, do I feel like this certification is worth your while? Uh, so far, from what I understand, it's hands-on. And not only that, it's it's a two-part exam, right? So you have questions that you need to answer, and then you also have to do a, a simulation environment. And it goes through right here. Uh, first, you check in. Now, the exam is like 200 and I, I forget what the price was, but we'll, we'll pull that up in a little bit. But you can see from here that I have my start exam because I already purchased it. It was like, I think it's like 250, but let, we'll confirm that in a little bit. Uh, so there's a lot of prerequisites that you would need. You can't just jump right into it thinking that you can use your, you know, your experience so far. You possibly can, but uh, just to be on the safe side, I would say go through if you have uh, try hack me a membership and and or even if you're just using the free rooms so i know some of the rooms are free that you can utilize this uh, gain that experience and then apply it to the exam so you check in uh, there's a portion of it there's 80 questions which is the multiple choice that's worth 20 percent of your score then there's a sock simulator one which is 40 percent real world scenario and then there's a Sock Simulator 2, which is another 40%, which is a, also a real-world scenario, which is great because now you have hands-on experience and you can put that on your resume. Uh, these are great, great ways to say that you're definitely experienced because you're going to be using real tools uh, in, in a real situation and you're going to go through the motion. And in order to pass this exam, you have to know it, right? You can't just say, you know, clicking off a few right answers and then expect to pass this certification which is not the case Terry because you see how heavily it's weighted on the simulators that's 80 percent so just by passing even if you got a hundred percent on the 80 questions that they're asking you you're only going to get a 20 percent out of uh, I believe it's a hundred it doesn't say what the total score out of what is I, I think or well, at least I haven't seen that yet but let's keep on going uh, top topics covered in exam Foundation, cyber defense framework, common malicious behavior, tools of the trade, and it goes down to a lot more details as you're going through each section of it. So this is definitely a great, great hands-on experience. Now, I haven't taken the exam yet, but just based on what I'm seeing as far as the documentation and what they're saying here, I'm taking their word for it because I have true like faith in try hack me because it's just a such a common ground for a lot of people to learn so many things um now i also use udemy and i'm just doing a quick comparison udemy doesn't provide any hands-on it's just like all lectures all videos uh try hack me is total opposite of that there's barely any lectures any videos if anything you have to read a lot like you you better have a good quality screen to read the the prints or uh, a bigger screen to read it because i i would find it really impossible and difficult to do this on like a let's just say a 14 inch laptop right because or or even on an ipad i'll be like like i need to constantly zoom in i'm using a 27 inch monitor i'm using four if you haven't you can't even see i was gonna say you haven't noticed but you can't even see what i'm using i have four monitors and i'm just all spread out they're all 27 inch actually one of them is a 32 inch and it just for the visibility uh, maybe that's just my age thing but i just want to put that out there have a, a decent size screen so you can actually read all the content what i tend to normally do is also increase the font size or the the percentage of the resolution so uh 
who is this for, right? You're going to get a lot of mixed reviews. Um, I wouldn't expect someone with, you know, higher positions currently in their role to take this exam or unless they really want to know the ins and outs of the SOC environment or you're a lead SOC environment or you're like the director of the SOC. Like you, you should probably know these things like the back of your hand, right? In order to get into that type of position. But here, students, IT professional, inspiring security analyst. That just means like you're fresh. Like you just, you want to start, you want to learn. Uh, security analyst. Um, so this is like, you're already you you have some years in it you have some experience but you know no one knows everything so you know you you constantly have to keep your your skill levels and, and your new tools and your new tactics or the the trending market you know uh, scenarios kind of keep that in in play as you're doing this exam because it's so so current all right uh, vulnerability analysis, incident handlers, and, and penetration testers. That's great, right? Because this is like a stepping stone to a lot of things. You can go blue team, you can go red team, and then you can do everything in between, right? <laughs> so, well, I just did a quick rhyme for that one. So what you'll receive after you pass all this, which is great, uh, instant result because it's pass or fail as soon as, you know, they'll, they'll score you. I've seen people have scores as well. Uh, feedback on your results. A, uh, a verifiable digital certificate, that's great because then you can post it on all your social media and your you know job, whatever market thing search that you're looking on. Uh, one option would be like LinkedIn. LinkedIn is like infamous for like people posting their, their current certifications or what they received. Um, uh, a physical certificate sent to you, which is optional. I'm not sure if there's a fee for that, but I mean, most people do everything digitally. But if you want to hang it on your wall, that's great as well. I'm not too sure what that certificate actually looks like yet. I haven't seen anyone post it. And a sh shareable credibly badge, which uh, consolidates all your certifications and you can register it. And then you, you'll see your digital badge that you can probably either put on your resume or in some header or some document as, as your signature or whatever it is. Okay. So let's go into the recommended learning. Now, here are my um, like rooms that I've, I've taken so far. And you can see like I'm all over the place. Like I, I don't sit in one room and like, oh, let me finish this to a, a hundred percent or uh, and and then go on to the next room. I, I just have this like I procrastinate a little bit and then I go into another room. I was like, oh, I just want to try this. I want to see what this is and and so on and so forth. And then now you can see why I'm like all over the place. All right. So let's go down the list really quickly because I'm not sure. I haven't seen anyone mention this. They they talked about taking a certification and who was for. So here are the prerequisites. And I believe this is an essential because if you don't know this stuff and which I personally, I've been doing this for some time. I don't need to. I don't feel like I need to sit through the entire try hack me to go through ring topology, star topology on different types of networks, even though I've done it. Um, there are other elementary level rooms that it looks nice if you complete them because just out of an OCD thing like, oh, I got 100% and you, you keep on stacking all the rooms that you've completed, which looks great. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I'm just kind of repeating a lot of this stuff. And if you guys have this type of experience already, you possibly can like not need to actually sit through all these rooms over again even though if you have experience already now if you don't have experience i would suggest that you do do these rooms to at least 80 to 90 percent of them uh, uh, and if you're that close you might as well just finish it so let me just go over some of the rooms now i haven't taken this exam or the certification yet because I wanted to make sure I review a lot of these rooms because I didn't realize some of these rooms were going to be a part of the required knowledge for this certification. So I was like, okay, um, I, I was doing a whole bunch of other rooms prior to these. And at the same time, I kind of just picked up on these because I was like, oh, okay, uh, th these were interesting. Now, these, a lot of these percentages that I was doing was prior to them announcing this certification. So 
Uh, the good thing is that I kind of went through some of them and not because of the certification, but because of my self-interest and, and just going through TriHackMe and, and doing all these different things. Now you can see a lot of these beginning ones, obviously they're easy. Cybersecurity 101, SOC Level 1, uh, those should be pretty, pretty uh, elementary as far as understanding the concepts, terminologies and, and workflows and things like that. And then you get into the practice, your skill, right? These are actual where you're reading it and, and they're asking you to put in, uh, fill in the blanks with the, the right information, the, the definitions and uh, whether it's like, you know, IP addresses and, and uh, all these other factors, right? Uh, all these other things that you would need to investigate and then fill in the blanks or answer the questions that they're proposing to you uh, throughout each one of these tasks. And then the SOC simulator, which is, wow, I said, I've never seen this one. Uh, take the available scenario to prepare for the exam in the virtual SOC simulation. So this one seems really, really unique and I'm really interested in it. And I, I will go through probably starting from this area on investigate with Splunk, which I have some, uh, you know, which I'm actually doing some of it right now. I'm like, okay, I'm going through it. I'm going through it. And then uh, like these investigate with Splunk, I have this one open already. This machine hasn't been started, but you can see uh, I just went through one so far. And, I, and then I'm like jumping back and forth. Uh, bad tendency on my part, but not saying that you have to do everything all at once and then come back to it. Uh, what I tend to do and I take it like a real life scenario is, you know, I multitask, right? I, 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 I'm even at work, I'm like doing one thing and then I'm doing another thing. Uh, it, it, there's sometimes there's not a lot of efficiency in that. But at the same time, if you're on a time crunch, you got to get things done. You're going to put focus on, on a percentage wise, right? Um, I, I take this example and I want to explain it. Like I have three kids. I can't just feed one kid and, and expect the other two to just wait until I feed the first one, right? I got to feed all three at the same time. And if they want different things, I'm going to try to regulate it as much as I can. But if they're complaining and screaming and kicking, you know, I'm going to try to, you know, set some rules, but at the same time, I will accommodate them to the best as I can. So that's where the percentage of delegating some of your resources, your personal resources, your efforts into something else, right? Now, when I'm reading a book, let's just say, some books I read for leisure, some books I read for learning and understanding, um, but I would never like just sit there and just read for leisure the entire time, then what am I learning, right? What am I trying to understand? I, I want to understand and learn more, then I, I read books that, that pertain to like certification, cybersecurity, you know, CISA, C-RISC, you know, CISM, and all those other exams. Uh, and, I, and I mix the two together, right? Uh, during that time, as I'm reading something, I'm, I'm probably going to go off and watch a video, uh, one or two videos about that topic. And, that, and that's how, you know, I, that's why you're probably seeing why, why is... Why is CyberHack jumping around in all these different rooms and, and you got these weird percentages for each one of them? Well, that's the reason. Uh, that's pretty much why, uh, you know, I, I have it that way. Uh, some people are not like that. Some people just focus on one thing and constantly just do it, do it, do it. I, I tend to not have that kind of attention span sometimes. So I'm like, oh, I'm getting bored of this. Let me go try and read something else and see if it sparks my interest. And then I'll come back. Um... It's just the way I operate, but I, I wanted to share that with you guys today. There, there is a lot of things. Uh, oh, I found it. So let me just come back to you guys right now. Um, this is, oh, that's another Splunk. So, so I should have showed this earlier. This, the exam detail, I'll, I'll end it here. Passing score is 750 out of 1,000, which is great. It's not too difficult. At least it doesn't sound too difficult. Duration, you have 24 hours. 24 hours by the time you hit start exam. So make sure you time that correctly because obviously if you start the exam now and then you go to bed, you, you probably lose seven to eight hours. And then the next day, if you have to go to work, that exam is going to expire. Right, you gotta make sure you have the 24 hour time frame. Probably realistically is not gonna take 24 hours. I would say it will be during the duration of your 
wake time like you're awake during this time from like let's just say 7 in the morning to like 10 11 p.m at night right i probably probably would not suggest a 24 hour no sleep to do this exam because you're just i don't think it's worth that type of energy because as it says here, the difficulty is a beginner, right? So you should know a lot of these things. So it shouldn't be too difficult. But what I'm thinking they're doing as 24 hour exam is kind of throwing it in the lines of like OSCPU at 24 hours to do this exam. Now that probably is a little more stressful. Uh, I, I've never taken the OSCP. Uh, but I have studied for it and I can definitely say if, if I had to choose, you know, between difficulty levels, uh, OSCP is definitely not a beginner, beginner level. Like you definitely need to know your things and possibly you need to stay up a little longer. Uh, prerequisite is none, but we do offer recommended learning path, which is great, right? So if you know enough of this, you can possibly pass without taking any of these rooms that TriHack Me is offering or any other knowledge besides the ones that you already know. Now, I'm not saying you can't you can't go into this certification not knowing anything and expecting it to pass just by clicking a couple of answers right, right? The 80 questions that they have. You actually have to go through the whole SOC simulator. So either you're taking your hands-on experience uh, from work or you've done labs on your own that you understand it or watch enough YouTube videos or training videos or courses that you've attended to possibly pass this exam without going through these trainings um, from TriHackBee, okay? Now, because they're suggesting the learning paths, I would take that up because they're probably just taking it straight from these learning paths and putting it right on the exam. So it makes sense to just go through them. And uh, requirements, obviously valid IDs to make sure you are who you are. And you get a one free retake if you don't pass. Uh, any, one, any further retakes after that, is a hundred a hundred is it a hundred pounds um i think that's a hundred pounds see i'm so out of it uh let me just look that up really quick uh just to see what is that equivalent to um in in us dollars so it's 126 dollars and 52 cents okay all right cool cool and then uh the language is only in english and then of course they go through the whole uh section one two and uh one two uh two sock simulators which is two hours uh so that's an hour each and the uh, 60 minutes for 80 questions okay so that's pretty much it and uh, i did see this particular video from mad hat uh i believe i i've seen other ones that that people have expressed and, and taken the certification and, and said that they passed it but realistically i don't i'm not too confident right now to say i can pass this because i'm not sure what's what's there yet so I, i'm going to go through the rooms like i said earlier to make sure that you know i got everything for the most part i'm in no rush to take the certification it's more for a self-enlightenment uh, understanding of how the certification is and I could come back and say, oh, wow, this certification was great. Or this certification was, I didn't feel like it was the best thing in the world, but it helps you in a way. So that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll leave it here. And I hopefully you guys can benefit from what I was just talking about. And I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care.